NBA trade deadline rolling along here as the Boston Celtics have made a trade. Harrison Graham and Chase Sr. with you guys. Subscribe to our Celtics channel, youtube.com slash Celtics TV, and we will have you guys covered uh, throughout the trade deadline. All right, Chase, let's break down this move for Boston. Yeah, so P.J. Dozier, Bull Bull, and a future second-round pick and cash being sent to the Orlando Magic. The Celtics receive a future second-round pick. Now, both P.J. Dozier and Bull Bull are out for the rest of the year. So this is really a move for Boston to clear some money. Maybe to bring in another player during NBA trade deadline day. If not, the very least, for Boston to clear some salary going into the future. According to ESPN's Bobby Marks, the trade puts Boston under the luxury tax. They will also create a $2.1 million and $1.9 million trade exemption. Bull Bull and Dozier are both on expiring contracts. Dozier out with a knee injury. Bull Bull with that foot injury. Bull has $707,000 remaining on his $2.1 million contract. Dozier, $626,000 on his $1.9 million salary. Orlando will need to free up two roster spots. So which, which that's really happen. a salary move for Boston and maybe – Today, they also trade away Dennis Schroeder. We're recording this during our live show around 1 o'clock Eastern. These things are very fluid. A couple things we're going to continue to monitor. Yeah, on the Orlando side, real quick, Terrence Ross probably going to get traded, so that's yeah. going to be one of the roster spots. But for Boston, okay, where do you go from here? Because obviously this is not a major trade, you know, wins and losses-wise. This is a financial trade. Do they go take a swing and get a guy like a Jeremy Grant before the deadline? Maybe you move a Marcus Smart to help facilitate that. Or... Maybe you stand pat, you get below that luxury tax number, and this offseason you make a big move because you've got some more flexibility. I think that move really creates more flexibility moving forward, whether it's in the next couple of hours, Chase, or whether it's this offseason. And something we've talked about a lot recently is that Boston's playing probably its best basketball since the bubble two years ago Easily. over the last couple of weeks. They've been really good. Easily, because since that Eastern Conference Finals run, this has really been a team that's floated around 500. Of course, they had some movement in the front office with Danny Ainge out, Brad Stevens in, Ime Odoka becoming the next head coach for Brad Stevens, but Boston playing really good basketball right now. NBA trade deadline day, they've won six in a row. They're eight and two in their last 10. Of course, they are headlined by two of the best young players in the NBA in Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Some rumblings a couple months ago about maybe those two players not getting along, one of them being traded to allow the other to flourish. I think that'd be an insane deal for Boston to do. Yeah. Build around those two young players. And with Boston hot, you combine that with the fact that the Eastern conference is wide open and if you have two players of that caliber that ilk on the same team you can make a run right now Miami first place in the east at 35 and 20 and then Boston only four and a half games back at 31 and 25 so yep. it's realistic if they continue to play good basketball with the first year head coach they make adjustments along the way maybe they have a trade deadline acquisition they climb up the eastern conference standings and with JB and JT that's a team to be reckoned with yeah, so what's your one-word reaction to this trade? Uh, mine is just money. <laughs> cash. Yeah, straight cash savings. only. All one word. <laughs> savings, uh, discount, whatever it is. One-word reaction to this trade by Boston. Uh, maybe a TBD, like a to be determined, more to right. come. We'll see what happens. Let us know what you guys think on this one. So let's talk a little more big picture. Uh, I think you and I are both in agreement. This is a team that's in buyer's mode, and I think that did change in the last couple of weeks uh, due to the fact that Boston has started winning. You alluded uh, the upward uh, movement in the conference standings there in the East. Uh, I still think, Chase, the biggest need for this team is a true point guard. Yeah. I just think if you get a true facilitator in here, even if it's not an elite point guard, I'm not saying Chris Paul or someone like that, but a guy that can run an offense and not just – you know, have Jason uh, Tatum and Jalen Brown bail you out all the time, I think that would be monumental for this team. No, I agree. And this is something that we've talked about for a long while. And when Marcus Smart signed that contract during the offseason, you're like, okay, so Marcus Smart's going to be the prototypical point guard when he's never been a prototypical point guard before. Now, I will say this about Marcus Smart. He's playing better. We know that he's a spotty offensive player. We know that he's a bulldog defensively, one of the best defending guards in the NBA. 
Him being in that point guard role the last couple of weeks, he's actually played a lot better. So does that open up an avenue for maybe him to stay and a player like Dennis Schroeder to get dealt? Now you go back and forth between Marcus Smart and Dennis Schroeder as your two point guards on this roster. Now that Peyton Pritchard is somewhat out of the rotation, you get two different players who have a different blend of skill sets. If Boston elects to move forward in that way with those two guys, I think that could make sense. But Keeping Marcus Smart, we know that he's part of the fabric of Boston. He's part yeah. of the fabric of this city and this fan base. And he fits in so nicely alongside some of these players when he's playing controlled basketball like he's been playing over the last couple of weeks. And him playing that way is a big reason why Boston has really climbed up the Eastern Conference standings and why they're 8-2 and two in their last 10 on that aforementioned and, winning streak. And Schroeder's been a nice piece for Boston yeah. this year. At 5.9 well. mil, no doubt. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. If you love the Boston Celtics, this is the channel for you, youtube.com slash Celtics TV. If you're watching on our live main uh, Chat Sports YouTube channel and you're a Celtics fan, go check it out uh, with that link below, youtube.com slash Celtics TV. More news, rumors, trades if they happen. We'll break them all down over there at Boston Celtics today. So one trade in the books for Boston. Again, P.J. Dozier, Bull Bull, second cash, uh, future second for Boston. Again, this was a financial move, luxury tax implications move, as uh, we broke down uh, earlier in the video. I do wonder and am curious what that could mean for the next couple of hours, and we've kind of played out some of those scenarios. Uh, Brad Stevens, you know, he's still young on the job, first year as a – you know, GM, president of basketball operations, Chase, whatever title you want to, you know, give him, call him, whatever, uh, probably still learning in that role. I do think something we saw toward the end of the Ainge era is he wasn't willing to pull the trigger on trades. Fascinated to see if that changes with Stevens, not only at this deadline, but moving forward as well. Yeah, no doubt. And look, you had to give Ime Adoka, you had to give Brad Stevens some time to try and figure out this roster. For Ime Adoka, he's never been a head coach before, although he's had great assistant coaching experience behind Greg Popovich um, with the Brooklyn Nets, with the Philadelphia 76ers, with Brett Brown. Give him the benefit of the doubt and honestly give him credit for adjusting along the way and finding a way to bring the best out of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown while they're on the court together and honestly finding a way for Marcus Smart to play better basketball as well. Now, as we approach the deadline, something that could sway the Celtics to make a bigger move is that the Philadelphia 76ers and Brooklyn Nets agreed to a deal between Ben Simmons and James Harden. This coming from Sam Amick on our live show. Things that make you go, hmm, per source, is a whole lot of optimism coming from the Ben Simmons camp that a deal with the Brooklyn Nets gets done. Mm. So that's something big that we'll continue to follow, or, uh, follow excuse me, and of course that has implications for what Boston might do. That, those are huge Eastern Conference implications yeah. moving forward if uh, a Simmons-Harden trade happens. So a lot of things on the line. Are the Celtics title contenders? Why for yes, in for no. I don't think they're there yet, Chase, but I think this last three weeks or so, like we've said, is easily the best they've played in about two years. So that's promising. Since the bubble, like you said. But I don't think they're quite a title contender. Maybe a conference finals contender, but a lot of implications. That JTJB, still, man. They, they you can, can do, do anything they with can those do two a chance. Hats. Like, yeah. If those guys are healthy, they can combine for 60 on any given night. Let us know what you guys think. And, of course, subscribe to our main Chat Sports YouTube channel. Chase and I uh, breaking down uh, all the moves that come across uh, during the NBA trade deadline live on Chat Sports, YouTube.com slash Chat Sports TV. So if you're watching this on Celtics today, join us over there. We'll have you guys covered for more Boston Celtics and NBA trade deadline coverage. Chat Sports is going to be your home all day long.